From the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in Washington, D.C., we honor George Lucas, the innovator who pushed the boundaries of cinematic storytelling. The Kennedy Center honors. And now, please welcome your host, Stephen Colbert. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished honorees, elected representatives, diplomats, dignitaries, and the small handful of you not running for president right now. <laughs> Welcome to the 38th annual Kennedy Center Honors. As I stand here, humbled by the beautiful John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, surrounded by some of the most influential people in politics and culture, I am inspired to ask, can anyone get me tickets to Hamilton? All right. Seated with the First Lady tonight are our five honorees. They will remain on the balcony for the entire evening. They don't actually appear on stage at the Kennedy Center Honors. They don't have to do anything tonight but sit there and listen to the presentations. We can say nice things about them. We could say terrible things about them. The point is, you cannot leave. <laughs> the contributions of tonight's honorees are staggering. The filmmaker in seat 1138 brought us film classics like Star Wars and Indiana Jones, movie franchises that changed American culture forever, but totally ruined Harrison Ford's carpentry career, <laughs> Mr. George Lucas. George Lucas recently shared one of his regrets. He told a reporter, I never got the experience that everyone else got to have. I never got to see Star Wars. Well, George, let me tell you, you missed out. It was really good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Carrie Fisher. Oh, my goodness. Where could she be? Play the message? What message? <laughs> well, then, of course, you should play it, you dimwit. <laughs> How dare you use such language? Just play it, and then we can get out of here. Hi, George. It's me. Look, I wanted to be there to help celebrate your Kennedy Center honor in person, but hey, since you invented video voicemail, I don't have to be. Um, I do want to tell you how much I admire your talent. You may not have been my only hope, but fans around the world, thank you for giving us a new hope. And now, in the honoree box, please welcome Melody Hobson. He just said, oh no. Right now, my husband is thinking, Melody, what are you doing? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm honoring you, just like everyone here tonight. I think George's movies have stayed and grown in our hearts for the last 40 years, because the stories are so simple, and yet at the same time, so profound. George's movies have soul. He'll be the first to tell you that Star Wars is not a movie about spaceships. It's about family. And family is something that George understands and deeply cherishes. One of the most memorable lines in Star Wars that George wrote is when Princess Leia says to Han Solo, I love you. And he responds, I know. <laughs> well, George, in case you didn't know, we love you, especially me. So now I will direct your attention to the screen where James Earl Jones will explain how George's path led from Modesto, California to this chair. George Lucas once said, deeply ingrained in our reality is our relationship with our parents and kids. That's where the real stories always end up. His story began in an idyllic American way. 
Born in Modesto, California to Dorothy and George Sr., George Jr. was free to unleash his busy imagination. He immersed himself in comic books, shared adventures with Flash Gordon, and watched radio serials in his mind's eye. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs> and though he devoured novels like Treasure Island, Robinson Crusoe, and The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, school was a disconnect. I was a consummate underachiever. I hated school. I loved to build things. I loved working on cars and engines. And all I wanted to do was race cars. Just days before high school graduation, George was broadsided by a classmate traveling 90 miles an hour. He was found unconscious with no trace of a pulse. The long period of convalescence had a life-changing effect on George. He decided to trade race cars for college. And rather than take over the family office supply business, he would enroll at USC School of Cinematic Arts. There will be no artists in this family, his father told him. That's no way to make a living. George's first student film was an avant-garde sensation. He won first prize at 47 film festivals and a coveted internship that led him to his mentor. It actually came from reading comic books. They taught and challenged each other in every way. And in 1971, with Francis Ford Coppola producing, George directed his first feature film. THX 1138 was a disquieting look at the future, set in the 25th century. It was our first glimpse of George's desire to reject the status quo. My first impression was, I hate you. <laughs> I hate that guy, man. He's so much better than I am. George followed up his exploration of the future with a trip to the past. American graffiti. His past. Where were you in 62? He inhabited every character in the film and defied studio brass by intercutting four seemingly unrelated stories, making them work as one, and using popular music instead of a traditional score. American Graffiti was a massive success, propelling George and Lucasfilm into the stratosphere. What if you came up higher? It was just his third feature film, and it changed everything. I know this is gonna work. I know it's gonna work because it's impossible. The way movies are made, the way we watch them, and the way they make us feel. To the world famous Chinese theater come the stars of the biggest box office success in motion picture history. No film before or since has had a greater cultural influence. Not to put that down. Cigarettes are dangerous. It transcended the zeitgeist and became part of the American experience. Well, I'd say cut. With Star Wars behind him, George bucked the system again. Hi, Daddy. Daddy? I think the biggest thing on Earth. He retired from directing for 15 years to raise his children. That's Daddy putting on a Snoopy ornament. Good morning, Katie. Hey, Dad. As his children grew, so did his empire. And his ability to give back. Pledging half of his fortune to charity, he is one of the most prolific philanthropists in the world, having created the George Lucas Educational Foundation at Utopia and the upcoming Lucas Museum of Narrative Art. George once said, don't listen to your peers, don't listen to your parents, don't listen to your culture, only listen to yourself. That's where you're going to find your truth. Please welcome 2006 Kennedy Center honoree, Steven Spielberg. George Lucas, he's a pathfinder and a pioneer. 
like Edison and Bell and Tesla and Jobs in the way that everything they touched changed a paradigm. George Lucas's Star Wars changed movies absolutely forever. And in my knowing George Lucas all these exciting years, I've experienced the power of the force, but never the dark side. I've seen George's moral urge in living his life as a good husband, a good dad, and a generous philanthropist. And at 71 years old, George still has all of his hair, <laughs> just as Chewbacca still has all of his. He must run the family. When, when George first envisioned Star Wars, the technology to make it didn't exist, so George had to invent it. His determination helped invent a new generation of special effects and launched a legendary company, ILM Industrial Light and Magic. And for 40 years and more than 300 films, including seven of the top 10 worldwide box office hits of all time, the artists at ILM have been doing the impossible. Lucasfilm and all its divisions have garnered an unprecedented 43 Academy Awards. And of course, who can forget that George also ushered in the next generation of surround sound called THX. So George, the audience is listening, and thanks to you, we promise we will never stop. For George Lucas, the only limit to what is possible is one's imagination. In 1975, he created Industrial Light and Magic to realize his vision for Star Wars. And with every success, George reinvested in the future, not just his, but every filmmaker's. It's wonderful to know that the tools are there to really begin to get what's in here, you know, out there into the, into the world. And ILM has been leading the charge in that quest since it began. Every CG effect we see today was born of the genius of George and his team, who together pioneered one first after another. The first fully computer-generated character, the first 3D character, first recreation of human skin. He has elevated the art of storytelling to affect not just what we see, but the way we see and hear it. Somewhere along his mythical journey, George Lucas got a look at the future, and he's been showing it to us ever since. Our tribute to George Lucas continues with a thrilling performance next on the Kennedy Center Honors. And now, please welcome 2007 Kennedy Center honoree, Martin Scorsese. Well, as you've just seen, my old friend George Lucas, um, and it is an old friendship. I mean, it goes back over 40 years. George has many areas of deep interest, fascination, and really obsession. And of course, the first obsession, cars. The man loves his cars. And the second obsession, movies about cars. <laughs> George has always, always tried to stay ahead of the technological curve. But all of that technology, all of that, you know, uh, invention, all of that uh, hardware, software stuff, has all been at the service of storytelling. That's George's magnificent obsession. To pay homage to a picture we grew up with. He's a born storyteller. And George was also there at the beginning of the Film Foundation, which is an organization I started 25 years ago with some friends, uh, which is dedicated to the protection and preserving of our motion picture heritage. And at this point, I think we've helped to restore nearly 700 films. And many of these restorations were made possible by George and his generous and continuing support. And George also has another great passion that uh, I want to tell you about. 
music. He's an artist who thinks musically. The music and the images are inseparable. In fact, the music in his pictures actually becomes another character. performance by Miranda Lambert is next on the Kennedy Center Honors. Only CBS. <laughs> 